Hello guys! Today I decided to make a video about the bench test preparation. My classes in the morning got cancelled due to upcoming July 4th and I kind of got some free time and I know most of you now are going through the process of prepar preparing for the bench test. Some of you already received the invites and you're stressed out how to get ready for that and some of you are still waiting for invites and I wish you the best to get invites, to go through a bench test and to get accepted to the dental school. And in this video I decided to share with you the burrs that are the most useful for the bench test that I found it will be only five and the other thing I made little tables about the dimensions for the crowns and for the uh, amalgam preparations that it's good to know for the bench test. Uh, I think it's kind of summarizes everything you need to pass the bank test like crown dimensions and um, amalgam class 2 dimensions and as long as you practice um, you will do just fine remember it's you don't have to be perfect you you need to be uh, above average that's all just do better than others that's what you need um, so uh, let's start with bears so as I mentioned, uh, you need only five burrs. I know I've made a previous video in which I've recorded like tools for the bench test this video. If you want to watch it, it's great. There are like all instruments and tools that you can buy uh, for the bench test and that will help you to prepare. However, in that video, uh, I was recording it right after I passed my bench test. And in that video, I kind of, I, I didn't know that I can use less burrs that I bought. I, I recommend in this video to use PFM burr kit from Stevenson Dental Solutions. Now, uh, going through dental school, I understood that it's too many burrs, that literally you can do a preparation using one or two burrs and this is enough. Because first of all, the less you're changing the burrs, the more time you save, the more time you have. And second of all, you, you, you don't need that many burrs to switch. So let me explain to you why and let me explain my kind of which burst I recommend for you to buy. So I'll start from the easiest. The first is for Amalgam Class 2. Just um, to be done with that, you need only one bird, Carbide 330. And here uh, I'm inserting here on the screen the table of dimensions for the Amalgam, Amalgam Class 2. Hopefully this will help. Just take Carbide 330 and um, try to do the prep with these dimensions and you'll, be, you'll do great on your bench test. So the second, I'm going to talk about the diamond burst, diamond burst right now. For the diamond burst, uh, a little reminder, um, I don't know if you know that or not, but this is a good thing to know how to understand the diameter of the diamond burr. Because if the burr is cylindrical shape, it's easy. It basically, the, the last three digits mean the diameter. But if the burr is tapered or conical burr, you need to understand that the last three digits of the burr tell you the diameter of the widest part of the cutting surface. It's not the tip, it's the widest part of the cut, cutting surface. So, for example, let's talk about my favorite burr. This will be burr number two the 6856016 and I'm gonna uh, write it down here so it's easier for you to know. So this burr ends three last digits 016 that means uh, the diameter of the widest part which will be it's tapered and it will be the, on top the upper part will be 1.6 millimeters and the diameter of the tip of this burr if this particular one is um, the tip is one millimeter in diameter. So when you do your prep you kind of need to know this because it will help you to do your measures uh, for the particular crown prep. So the diameter of the tip will be diameter of your margin, right? Uh, anyway, uh, let's move. So this burr I would recommend to buy it for everyone, literally for everyone. You can uh, use only one this burr to do all your preps. I know in this video I'm recommending you five burrs because it's a little bit you feel more confident and comfortable when you have choice to do particular like finishing, polishing, um, uh, uh, different stuff. But you literally you can buy only 330 for the amalgam preps and you can buy 6856016 for the um, uh, all crown preps. Anyway, this burr is coarse, it's a green diamond burr which is tapered in shape and it's ideal for all crown preps. Now, since I'm recommending you five burrs, I'm gonna move on. So the next burr is 
completely identical shape as uh, the one that I mentioned, green, but it's just red. It's, it's just less coarse, that's all about this. And the number of this bird is 8856016. Again, it's here below. And this bird you can use kind of to uh, finishing, polishing your uh, final prep. Um, that, that's the only difference. Otherwise, it's the same bird. You can you can do all your prep. I'm 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 seriously talking about whole prep, doing just with one bird. Occlusal reduction, interproximal uh, clearance, um, margins, everything you can do with the green one or with this red one. It's kind of up to you the preference. But I like to have them both because I like a little bit too smooth with the red one after the green one. All right, the next bird that I'm gonna talk is. 878K0112. Uh, uh, I bet you can say it's just 8780112. This one, the diamond burr, I recommend to buy it. Uh, it's a very nice kind of thin burr. You can use it, uh, you can use it to break the contact. And if you're not if you if you don't feel comfortable to break to break the contact with the regular burr. Or you can use it, uh, uh, like I use it if I need to break the contact, or I can use it for the full gold, or gold crown prep. I'd say you can still use the previous two burrs for the full gold crown prep. They are completely acceptable and you can do the perfect prep with them. Just don't engage full diameter. But if you want something um, kind of gives you the easier the result, you can use this burr. Um, and it will give you perfect full gold crown prep. I really like this burr. And uh, it is tapered from 1.2 millimeters in thickest and the tip is 0.6 millimeters. Again, uh, remember how I explained that last three digits tell you the widest diameter of the cutting edge. So 1.2 the widest, right? And the tip is uh, 0.6. And the last but not least, the burr that I recommend you to buy because um, it's kind of good for those who like perfection. It's uh, 10839 uh, It is cut cutting burr to remove the J margin. So this burr uh, has no cutting surface on the sides. It only has cutting surface on the very um, flat on the uh, end. And you just go at the end of once you've done your prep and you just check for J margins because J margins obviously is a critical mistake. Um, I, I, I'm gonna insert here the table um, of all dimensions that you need for all kind of crowns. I hope that it will help you a lot because all basically you need to memorize the dimensions for your bench test and um, feel relaxed, come to the bench test. If you see at least one green uh, diamond burr, the one that 856016, you are safe, you're on a safe page. You can you think about dimensions. You take this bird. You can do all your prep with that bird, and uh, I'm telling that's what we are doing in school, and uh, we are even practicing for our. Uh, we are going to have the credits exam or ADEX exam. It's up to the students' choice, but we are practicing with this one bird for our you know, crown prep for the uh, credits exam, and um, it it works just great. So um, like literally all I start buying is just this one burr, the green one, and um, everything else I have, but I rarely use it. The, these are my little tips for the bench test. Uh, the other thing, what else can I say? Just guys, calm, calm. Remember bench test is not that important at your actual interview. Interview puts a lot, like basically how much they like you, they define it by interview. And then if you do okay on the bench test, there is a possibility that, that we will um, choose you in comparison to other candidates who did maybe a little better on the bench test. Uh, like you need to you need to do okay, you need to perform a better than average to help you. But um, main thing is your interview. And now I wanted to give you a little bit of updates. Um, why I'm not recording videos so often as I used to anymore. Uh, I hope I will come back. It just um, before we had clinical certification course, we, wor we worked in simulation lab and we just were practicing our manual skills as well as our knowledge. Uh, but uh, we had lectures. But now we started clinics, uh, clinics with patients, and it got very. I'd say it got very stressful. Because it's a lot of information and 
The main stress comes from the clinics is from the program. They, they have us to put all information about the patient in a program called Axiom. And this program is insane. I mean, you can learn it. I feel like more, more comfortable with this program. Like, I guess I worked already almost a month with this program and I feel a little more comfortable, but it's still, it's so much to do in this program and so much to learn that you basically turn your attention, you, you have to turn your attention about not the procedure that you're performing today, about how to put this procedure and register all the documents in this Axiom program. And it takes your attention away from the patient, which is not good. But it is what it is. I am just suffering with this Axiom, hoping I'll get better in that and uh, everything. Then I'll be able to just focus on what I'm doing in a patient mouse and not to think about this um, Axiom, which I think it's completely useless because most practices don't use this program in real life. I've heard they use it only if you work with the Medicaid insurance, but otherwise you don't need to know this program because it's too much bureaucracy and too much unnecessary, I guess, things you have to do that, like some referrals or uh, forms. Uh, it's like consents. I mean, it's like, it's just unnecessary too much. Obviously you need a patient's consent for the procedure, but all these referrals within or, or outside the clinic, it's like all that just gets very, very uh, too much stuff in one program and you have to know all of that basically. Otherwise, you cannot document what you've done to the patient and um, as you, we all know, it's very important in the United States to document everything. So anyway, I'm, I'm dealing with this axiom right now and uh, I'm very happy to see patients. I it's been a while since I worked with patients and it makes me kind of excited and happy to work with them again and that's why I'm not showing up a lot um, in this um, in YouTube channel and you're still welcome to write me your questions and I'll try to do all my best to answer to them but don't judge me strictly if I don't because just remember I am a little bit busy with the clinics right now. Once things settle down I'll, I promise I will do more videos and you can write in comments which kind of videos do you want me to, to make for you. I'll do them and uh, write, write me all your questions and I wish you good luck with your bench test um, and uh, see you soon guys. Bye!